Elevate, wherever you're watching or listening tonight, we're so happy to be with you. We just want you to zero in on these lyrics tonight, and we believe that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So wherever that is for you, we just want you to sing this tonight. Come on. Step out of the shadows, step out of the grave, break into the wild, and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces, grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Here we go. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit. Scars. Come back to communion. Come back to the star. Run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Where the spirit. out sing chains chains will fall prison shake at the sound of jesus name lives made whole hearts awake at the sound of jesus name come on believe it chains will fall prison shake at the sound of jesus name lives made whole hearts awake Captives free and sing. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. 
Come on, proclaim it. Sing, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Yeah, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Sometimes when we don't know what to sing, we just sing, whoa. For all 
What's up, everyone? Thanks for joining us tonight. We love that no matter where we are, we can worship together every Wednesday. Guys, this is our third week together, and I'm gonna be honest, it's never been easier to invite friends to church or groups. So right now, stop, literally stop. Get out your phone and text your people. Don't let your friends miss out on all the fun. If it's your first time tuning in, we wanna say thanks. So text the number on the screen with your name and grade and we'll be sending you a gift this week. And if you've been with us before and wanna get into community, you can text that same number on the screen. We're in week three of our series, Even Here. And I don't know about you, but this series has been exactly what I've needed. We want to see how you're watching, taking notes, and diving into groups. So make sure that you're tagging us at MS Elevate on social media. And guys, despite what the world looks like right now, we know that even here, God can and will change lives. Let's dive on in. 
Hey students, we are so excited to be with you again for week three of Even Here, our series where we've been unpacking the life of Daniel. And we've been seeing how God not only shaped Daniel, but used Daniel in incredible, incredible ways. And, and we believe that as we learn lessons from Daniel's life, that not only can you and I be shaped, but we can also be used by God in incredible ways. And, and I know that as difficult as this season is, and as tough as this season is, one of the things that I have done to get through this season is to remember some of the normal things in my life, some of the normal things that make me remember what life was like before all this. Uh, some of those normal things for me are um, my favorite Netflix shows. Uh, even if I've seen it a dozen times, one of the normal things for me is to just binge my favorite TV show. Uh, some of the other normal things is running. I, I, I love running. And so I sneak away as often as I can to go for a run and I stay socially distant. So it's okay. Um, another one of the things that is normal for me that I love is Chick-fil-A cookies. And I know that, that sounds weird to say that I love running and Chick-fil-A cookies, but that's just one of the big contradictions in my life. I love them both so much. And so those are some of the things that I hold on to to help me feel normal in the middle of all this. Um, but as I was studying Daniel 4, what we're going to be reading tonight, it reminded me of something that should feel normal even in the middle of this season, even in the middle of everything we're going through. There is something that is spiritually that should feel just as normal as any other season in life. Um, even in the middle of a quarantine and a pandemic, this big idea that we're going to look at and tackle tonight, I think shows us uh, that it should be something that we see as normal, even in the middle of everything that feels abnormal. And it's this main idea, this main point that even here, God is changing lives. Even in a season like this, God is changing lives. Even in the middle of a pandemic, even in the middle of a quarantine, even in the middle of everything going on, God is here to shape us, but not only to shape us, but to use us in incredible ways. And so we are going to unpack that from the life of Daniel tonight. But if you and I, if we're going to get our heads around this reality that even here, even in this season, God is changing lives. And there's some big truths that we're going to unpack from Daniel chapter four that we're going to jump in. And so this is what's been happening in Daniel's life. Daniel has been uprooted. He has been brought into Babylon. He now serves the king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar. And he has not only been shaped by God, but he's also, God has used Daniel to bless the king and to bless the nation of Babylon, as odd as that may sound. And so where we find ourselves in, in chapter four of Daniel is the king has had another dream. The king has had a dream. And for whatever reason, God decided to uniquely speak to the king through his dreams, to where his dreams were not just random dreams. I know my dreams and probably your dreams too. They're just random, but the kings weren't that way. God, for whatever reason, decided to uniquely speak to King Nebuchadnezzar through his dreams. And he uniquely positioned Daniel in his life so that Daniel could tell the king what these dreams meant. And so the king has another dream that freaks him out. Uh, he has another nightmare uh, where basically he wakes up and, and this is what happens in verses six and seven of Daniel four. It says this, it says, so I commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be brought before me to interpret the dream for me. When the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and diviners came, I told them the dream, but they could not interpret it for me. You see the, the king has this dream that freaks him out. He's freaked out really bad and he, he can't understand what this dream means. He doesn't know what the meaning is. And, and so the first truth that we're going to need to unpack, if we're going to understand that even here, even in this season, God is changing lives is this, is this truth that everyone has a problem they can't fix. Everyone has a problem they can't fix. The king had a problem he couldn't fix. You and I have a problem that we can't fix. You see, for the king, he has this problem that he doesn't understand what his dream meant. And so he pulls in the smartest people that he knows. He pulls in the experts. He pulls in the, uh, the most intelligent people that he's recruited in the most powerful country in the world at that time. And he has brought them in and said, okay, I, I need your advice now. I need you to explain this to me. And basically they say, we can't do it. This is a problem we can't fix. And if you think about it, that's, that's kind of strange because the king is the most powerful person in the world. The king commands the biggest armies, the king has the biggest bank account. The king is popular. He is influential. He has power and authority. No one tells him no. But you see, he has a problem that he can't fix. The king has a question that only God can answer. His money, his popularity, his fame, all of his power cannot fix this problem that he has. See, and for you and for me, we have a problem that we can't fix. We have a problem that no matter what, we can't address. And that problem is sin. 
you and I have a, a problem called sin. Everyone we know has this problem called sin. And an easy definition of sin is anything that I do that God told me not to do or anything that I don't do that God told me to do. See, the king had this problem that he couldn't fix. He had this question he couldn't answer. But for you and I, every one of us, we have this problem called sin. And because of that problem, we're separated from God. And because of that problem, we can't have a relationship with God. And we're going to unpack from the King's story that how even here God is changing lives. But if, if we're going to start that and we're going to understand how God wants to change our lives and the lives of people in our life, then we're going to have to start by understanding that there is a problem, that everyone has a problem that they can't fix. For the King, it was this dream that he didn't know the answer to. For us, it's this problem of sin. It's this problem that, that we have made mistakes that has broken our relationship with God. And, and no amount of money, no amount of trying hard, no amount of good grades, no amount of church attendance, no amount of athleticism or social media followers can fix our sin problem. But we are going to see how God is in the business of changing lives, even in a season like this. And so everyone has a problem that they can't fix. But also we need to understand that everyone needs someone to show them next steps. Everyone needs someone to show them next steps. And so the king has turned to the world. The king has asked the smartest people in the world that he knows of. He, he relies on his money. He relies on his power. He, re, he relies on everything at his disposal. And he can't find the answers that he needs from everyone around him, from the world around him. And so he asked Daniel, this, this guy that's helped him in this past, this guy that he knows has some sort of special relationship to this God that Daniel says is the one true God. And so he brings Daniel in and Daniel comes in and explains to him what the dream means. And basically what Daniel tells him is Daniel says, look, because of your pride, because you believe that you're the reason that you're in power, because you, believe, because you really believe that you are the most powerful person in the world and you believe that no one in the world is more powerful than you or mightier than you or has more control than you and because you refuse to give God credit for being the one who put you in control and the one who keeps you in control and the one who has kept blessing you, because you refuse to acknowledge that, God is going to judge you. God is going to punish you. And basically what's going to happen, King, is, is you're going to lose your sanity. You're going to lose your mind. And for a few years, you're going to run off and you're just going to live in the wilderness. And you're not going to know right from wrong. You're not going to know top from bottom. You're going to lose all of your influence, all of your power. You're going to lose your sanity for several years because of this. But you see, I, I love what Daniel tells him. Daniel just doesn't tell him that and then walk away. Daniel just doesn't tell him that and say, hey, that's your problem, not mine, bro. Deal with it. No, what Daniel does is Daniel steps in and he gives the king next steps. Even though this king invaded his country, even though this king had forced him to work for him, even though this king was probably a tough guy to get along with at times, Daniel gives the king next steps that he can take. Daniel tells him this. Basically, Daniel says, look, king, this is what God's told me, but maybe if you repent, and, and all that means is, is maybe if you get back on the same page with God, if you're willing to turn from your sin, if you're willing to stop with the pride, if you're willing to acknowledge that God's really in control and you're willing to trust him, if you're willing to turn from that, if you're willing to repent, then maybe God won't judge you. Maybe God will continue to bless your prosperity. Maybe you will keep being king. And, and maybe God won't judge you if you're willing to turn back to him and ask him to forgive you and start following him. See, Daniel didn't just tell the king the truth and then leave him with it. But Daniel gave him next steps to take. And so I think for you and for me, if we're going to get next steps, if we're going to be able to give next steps to those in our lives, Four quick pieces of advice for how we can give someone next steps. The first is you need to care about the person. I know that seems obvious. I know that, that seems like, yeah, that should be a given. But often the most obvious things are the things that we forget most often. And so if we're going to give someone next steps, we have to start by caring about them. We have to start caring about what they're going through and what they've been through. So the first step is we have to care, but then we have to be willing to listen. We have to be slow to speak and willing to listen to them and listen to how they got into the situation they're in. So if we're going to give people next steps, we have to care. We have to listen. And a lot of times we have to ask for advice. Maybe that's your small group leader. Maybe that's your parents potentially. Maybe that's a coach or, or one of us on staff. And you have to be willing that if you don't know the right answer to something, or if someone asks you a question, you're like, I don't really know what their next step is. You need to be willing to ask advice. And so care and listen, ask advice, but ultimately point them to Jesus. Point them to Jesus. You see, we talked about this problem that we all have that we can't fix, that our money can't fix, our friends can't fix, 
that just because we grew up in church or our parents are Christians, that we can't fix that, that we have this sin problem. And because of that, just like the king, we're, we're going to be judged by God because of that sin. But you see, Daniel was willing to point the king back to God. And, and we need to be willing to point people back to Jesus that because Jesus lived a perfect life, because Jesus died on the cross and because he came back from the grave, if we're willing, just like Daniel told the king, if we're willing to turn to God and to trust him, and we're willing to let God now be our leader, be our king in our life, if we're willing to ask him to forgive us and follow him, then he'll forgive us and he'll fix that relationship. And so ultimately, we need to care and we need to listen and we need to ask advice. But ultimately, if we're going to give people next steps, or if you're going to understand your next step, then, then you need to be willing to point people or be pointed to Jesus to know that there's forgiveness in that. And so everyone has a problem they can't fix and everyone needs someone to show them next steps because everyone will have an oh no moment. Everyone will have an oh no moment. See, what happens for the king is this, is, is, is Daniel tells him, look, if you will turn, if you will repent, if you'll turn from that sin and you'll ask God to forgive you, and you'll cut it out with that pride. Maybe God will continue to bless your prosperity. Maybe God will continue to let you be king. And so the king does a good job of that for a little while. But there, there gets to this point, and maybe it's just because the king has started for, to forget what Daniel told him. I would guess that the king has started getting more comfortable with what Daniel had told him. And, and he started getting to the point where like, he starts getting back into the habit of believing that he really is in control, that he really is all that, that he really is the one that's holding the whole world together. And so the king, uh, uh, what Daniel 4 says is the king is on top of his palace and he's looking at the city of Babylon. And he starts thinking about how incredible it is that he put Babylon on the map and that he starts believing that he really is the greatest one that's ever lived, that he really starts believing that all of this success is because of his intelligence and his power and his connections. And he quits believing that God is the reason that he is where he is. He starts getting prideful again. He starts getting prideful again. And so, and so God judges him for that pride. And, and God basically keeps that word that he gave him. And he says, okay, king, if, if you want to believe that and you want to discount me and you don't want to give me my proper credit, then you are going to lose your sanity for the next few years and you are going to run and live in the wilderness for however long and, and you will eventually get your kingdom back, but you are going to waste a lot of time because you're not willing to acknowledge me. See, and the king has this oh no moment and we've all had oh no moments and we've all had friends who have oh no moments where someone had told us what was going to happen, where someone had warned us, but we decided to keep playing with fire. We decided that we were going to keep testing the line. And then finally, that oh no moment catches us. Maybe your parents found something on your phone and it became an oh no kind of moment. Maybe uh, the, some, that rumor at school, maybe that rumor was found out to be true and it was that oh no kind of moment. Maybe your family is going through an oh no kind of moment because of everything going on in our world. But we all face these oh no moments. We all face these oh no moments. And so when you or I or the people in our lives go through those oh no moments, the first thing that we need to remind them and that they need to remember is that if you're a Jesus follower or because you're a Jesus follower, that God's opinion of you is not based on how awesome you are. God's opinion of you is not based on how well you keep the rules. God's opinion of you is not based on any of that stuff. God's opinion of you is based on Jesus and the fact that Jesus loves you and Jesus went to the cross to die for you. And so if you're a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus, then the first thing you need to remember in those oh no moments is that God's opinion of you is based on Jesus, not on you. And for your friends that don't know Jesus, that aren't Christians, that, that don't know the Lord, then the most important thing that you can tell them is that when they put their trust in Jesus, when they put their faith in Jesus, when they turn to Jesus, that his opinion of them is no longer based on what they do or don't do, but it is based on what Jesus has done for them. See, and I think one of the hard things for us, though, is when we have people in our lives that have those oh no moments, it's hard not to tell them, I told you so. But we all know that the worst thing that you can tell someone in the middle of an oh no moment is I told you so. We hate when we have hit rock bottom and we have done the one thing that someone warned us about or someone told us about. And then we go and do it anyway. The last thing we want to hear is I told you so. And so for the people in our lives as they have those oh no moments, 
We don't need to use that as a time to tell them I told you so, but we need to use that as a time to remind them that God cares about them even in the middle of that. See, because if, if, from the king's perspective, if, if you could talk to the king, if you could get into the king's head, I, I, I bet the king would say something like this. That the, the king had never felt further from God, but God had never been working more in the king's life. See, because that's what oh no moments create is in our feelings, in our emotions, it feels like God is so distant. It feels like God is so far away. It feels like God is so angry at us. But God uses those oh no moments. He leverages those oh no moments to work more than ever in our lives, to remind us of what's really important, to remind us. For the, for the king, he used this oh no moment to remind the king that he's really not in control. And as long as he keeps trying to believe and think and act like he has ultimate control, then his life will never go like God intended. You see, everyone will have that oh no moment. You see, even here, even in this season, God's changing lives. And if we're going to see that and believe that and be a part of that, then we have to know that everyone has a problem they can't fix, that everyone needs someone to give them next steps because everyone's going to have an oh no moment. And after that oh no moment, everyone needs a reminder that it's not too late. Everyone needs a reminder that they've not done something too far for God to forgive them. Because even here, God is changing lives. See, look at what Nebuchadnezzar says in verse 37. He says this, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the King of heaven, because everything he does is right and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. And basically what's happened in his life is he lost his sanity for several years. It took him several years before he finally was broken, before he finally realized that, okay, I'm not in control, that God put me on this throne in Babylon, that he keeps me in this throne in Babylon, and I'm dependent on him. I'm not dependent on my money or my power or my connections, but I'm dependent on him in this season and for my life. And so finally, Nebuchadnezzar is broken, and he's reminded that he wasn't too far gone for God to keep working in his life. See, Nebuchadnezzar's sin, the king's sin was pride. He believed that he was as powerful as God and that he had as much influence as God. Maybe yours is pride or the people around you, maybe it's pride. Maybe it's gossip. Maybe it's lying. Maybe it's lust. Maybe it's a lot of different things. But the thing to remember is even in the middle of that, that you and others, they're not too far gone, that God's grace is bigger than someone's pride, that God's forgiveness is bigger than someone's gossip, that God's mercy is bigger than someone's lust. And if we will trust Jesus and we will turn to Jesus, that he will forgive us because we're not too far gone for Jesus to forgive us. And so as we start wrapping this up and and we start thinking, if, if we all need next steps or we need to be the kind of people that show others next steps. Because even here, even in this season, God is changing lives. There's there's really three next steps that that we could potentially take. The first is this, is is that there are some who need to meet Jesus. They need to meet Jesus. You're like King Nebuchadnezzar, and maybe you've heard a lot about God. Maybe God has, has been a part of your life, but he's not been in control of your life. You've never said, okay, I, I'm a sinner. I I need Jesus to forgive me and I need to let Jesus be the leader in my life, be the king of my life. And so maybe that's where you are now. For others, we need to follow Jesus in baptism. Maybe you would say, okay, I've trusted Jesus. I've asked him to forgive me, but you've never taken that next step of being baptized, which is the first command that Jesus gives his followers in the New Testament. And so if that's the case and you would say, hey, I need to meet Jesus or, hey, I need to be baptized, then, then reach out to us, reach out to us, DM us so that we can follow up with you and so that we can connect you to those next steps that God wants you to take. But maybe you're here, maybe you're listening or watching and you're saying, I, I know Jesus and I've been baptized, but I've not been living like that. There's been some areas in my life in the middle of all this that, that I'm just not giving God control of. I'm like King Nebuchadnezzar. I'm, I'm taking, I'm trying to take my own control in life then you need to turn back to Jesus. You need to turn back to Jesus. And and I know that that sounds hard or it sounds weird, but it is one of the most basic things as Jesus followers we're supposed to do. Because even though Jesus has saved us and forgiven us, we're not perfect yet. We still make mistakes. We still sin. And when that happens, we turn back to him. And how you can follow up on that next step is connecting with your small group leader and letting them know that. And if you're not in a small group, this is an awesome time to reach out to us so we can connect you to a small group. Because as we take these next steps, we see that even here, even in this season right now, that God is changing lives. And so if that next step is meeting Jesus, if that next step is following him in baptism, 
if that next step is just turning back to him because you are a follower, whatever that next step is, this is a season that even here, God wants to change lives. And so that's gonna be our prayer as we close tonight. Jesus, we thank you so much for this time together, Lord. We thank you so much that you worked in Nebuchadnezzar's life and that you used Daniel in his life, God. And and I pray that even here, even in a season like this, God, that you would continue to change lives, that you would use us, your followers, if we've trusted you, that you would use us to help speak into others' lives and shape the way that others see you, Lord, so that they can take their next steps. Or if there's anyone watching, Lord, that needs to take one of those next steps, that you would give them the courage to just DM us or to reach out so that they can take that next step and so that we can follow up with them, Lord. And we pray that you would just continue to shape us in this season, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen.